and of course she's just a, a bag of steel ball bearings, but uh, we don't know that. <laughs> yeah. I've been asked a question a couple of times about uh, the scene where Spade is searching Bridget's apartment, and then he sits down and makes a cup of coffee and drinks it. And this, there's been a lot of discussion about this. Why the hell would he do that? Uh, it, it's another one of those meaningless things. And having been a private detective, I said, no, no. I understand that perfectly. As a private detective, I was mainly a repo man. And if I repoed a guy's car and his lunch was in it, I ate his lunch. <laughs> because literally, I'm eating your lunch. <laughs> I'm establishing dominance. I control you. And that's what Spade was doing, drinking a cup of coffee, making it in her apartment. He's dominance. I'm Mark and Yeah, Mark and Mr. Other questions? I wanted to ask about the relationship between Spade and Archer. I mean, at one point, it says that Spade hated Archer. Yeah. He apparently had from the beginning. Yeah, he said his. We were in business for a week, and I realized he was a son of a bitch. And in my novel, I uh, tell you why. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, Archer was not very bright. Uh, he, was, he was a betrayer. Uh, I have been, having been for Burns, a detective who ferreted out communists up in the, center, uh, the Seattle uh, waterfront area. And so he was a guy who wormed his way in and betrayed him. And Spade found this out too late. <laughs> and he, so he stuck with him for a year. But he said, you know, after the year is up, he's gone. But then he got killed before the year was up. So Spade was saved the problem. <laughs> Other questions? Was the book recognized as a good book as soon as it came out, or did it take a long time? Absolutely, instantly. It was, it was almost everybody realized this was the only thing that came before, you know, was, Hammett didn't invent the tough private eye. That was a guy named Carol John Daly who invented a tough private eye race when he was. Um, dreadful stories. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and what is interesting, if you research Carol John Bailey, he lived with his mama back in New Jersey, <laughs> and he had never, you know, raised a hand of anger. And so his things were all of this blood and guts and gore and thanks, <laughs> And so, uh, uh, but then Hammond came along with the op, and suddenly the private detective was real. He was a real flesh and blood human being. And, and there he was. So, yeah, it was recognized right away as uh, the, 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 um, Matt Drupal, who was one of the great, he's a, he's a great Hemingway and Fitzgerald man, and also a Hammond man. And he says that uh, from the day that Maltese Walton was published, it was the most influential book in the field that has ever been written or ever will be. So, you cannot write, I challenge any writer, you cannot write a mystery in the American style and very few in the British style that does not owe a debt to the Maltese book. I mean, it's, it's almost impossible because it's like Poe, it's like Doyle. You know, Poe invented the detective story. Doyle invented the ratiocination story. And nobody will ever be able to supplant these guys because they were the first. And Hammett was so good at what he did because he had been a private detective. He had been in that field. He'd been shot at. He'd been kicked around. He'd fallen off roofs. And uh, so his stuff was so real. Fred Danny, who was half of Ellery Queen, uh, he once remarked that uh, Hammett was the, what he called a romantic realist. Uh, the events in his stories, the characters were flesh and blood and guts, but the stories themselves 
were romantic. A golden crusted bird. <laughs> you know? uh, and that's why it works so well, because it isn't just Mickey Spillane. You know, it's it's Mickey Spillane with uh T James, you know, it's it's there's there's a, there's an overlay of 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 uh a little goes over over things. Anything else? The Thin Man is a, is a spoiled book. I mean, they they uh, was tired when he wrote that one. It's a wonderful book. It's fun. It's, but remember, Nick Charles has quit. He's not a private eye anymore. And that's the only options open to the private eye as defined by Hammond. Either you hang in there and do it, or you quit. You don't do it badly. You just, and he had quit, and, and then he's dragged back into it. In my novel Hammond, I owe a lot to that idea of Hammond being a private detective who, who turned writer. And I did the same thing, and that's why I, I thought in my Ubers that I could write a novel about them because I had gone through the same process. You love both things. There's being a, an, an investigator is is so gripping, and uh, but being a writer is gripping. <laughs> and so you know you, you get you get hung up. I always I, I once said to, talking to somebody that that, that the difference is that detectives grouse around in the garbage of people's lives. Novelists create people and then grouse around in the garbage of their lives. <laughs> so, I mean, it, it's, they're very similar professions, except in one you don't get shot at and you're playing around with somebody's wife.